Sports Talk Bears. Hey, if you get a second, like and subscribe. It helps out a ton. So we've got a lot of arguing here, right? Going back and forth between fans and media types about what we should do moving forward. Fields or Williams, offensive coordinator choices, keeping our head coach if that was the right decision. But this move by our team president, Kevin Warren, it signals so many good things to come. And I'm actually pretty excited about it. And in some ways, this whole thing, it's its a divide. It's a divide between the old guard and the new guard, tradition versus new flavor of the league. But there was just a sea change in the Bears front office with the firing of Cliff Stein. This is after 22 years with the team as chief contract negotiator, among other duties over the years. One thing, though. I don't like to celebrate something like this. Understand me properly here. It's a big thing if someone's fired, but there's two reasons specifically this was done, and I'll get into that in just a couple minutes. And also, for you guys that watch regularly, I will do my best to do all the names properly. I won't mispronounce names, so that's my Achilles heel sometimes. So let's just keep moving on. This firing, it signals something huge. The way the Bears have been doing things, it just isn't good enough. And our team president, Kevin Warren, he is not afraid to do whatever is needed. And he's also finally been given power to do so. And that is huge as well. We're finally changing into a modern team. Finally. So it all started with the analytics polls uses when drafting players. Uh, a baseline use of the RAS scores, that's only a small part of it, but that's huge. I, for one, welcome this shakeup in the front office as well. WindyCityGridiron.com, they give great background on this. They gave me great source material on this. You guys got to check them out. They do incredible work. I want to give credit where credit's due. One old guard member of the team, they're pretty upset about this. And this is former Bears College Scouting Director Greg, Gra Greg Gabriel. He was super heated. He was a part of the Bears from 2001 to 2010. He's highly respected, though, but I'm not sure I agree with what he had to say. Gabriel was under the Angelo administration here at Hallis Hall, so here's what he had to say on Twitter. This is what he said. Going forward for a while, my account will remain private. This is in reaction to the firing. I won't post on anything Bears as they aren't the organization I once worked for. Any comments I have on hiring, signing, trades, picks, etc., they'll come through Whitney City Gridiron or GTF on Barroom Network. In short, blank them. Uh, that's great. Um, at one point, Gabriel appeared to threaten to reveal some skeletons in the closets at Hallis Hall. He also tweeted, tune in Tuesday at 11 uh, on the Barroom Network as I will tell some stories I've remained quiet about for some time. So he is ready to react to this by telling some tales out of school. So here we go. There's a few things I want to highlight here. First, the thought of the Bears aren't the organization I once worked for. You mean the incompetent group that stayed in the archaic past under the leadership of Ted Phillips? Have never gotten the quarterback position right, have been cheap with players we need, and then going out the door, letting them go out the door, but then always having um, seem to make the wrong free agents rich. Then we rinse and repeat and we restart and we rebuild. You mean that organization? What angers Gabriel about this? I actually welcome. Thank goodness we're moving away from the organization that we've always been. We need to build a winner here. And there's reasons for, for his firing that Gabriel's simply ignoring in his call for blind loyalty to an employee, frankly, who needed to go. We have needed change across the board desperately for years. And Kevin Warren coming on board, it's a great move. He's been here for about a year, and he's kind of stood back and observed. For any of you that have been in the business world, I have. I've managed businesses. That's something that great leaders do. They come to someplace new, and they just observe. They learn the organization from the ground up, and that's exactly what Warren has done. Let's look at what he said at the postseason presser. I watch everything, Warren said. I had one-on-one -on -one meetings with over 211 of our employees, from practice to walkthroughs to games to front offices to management. This is my life. In short, Warren knows what he's doing, and he's doing it the right way. I wouldn't be surprised for more changes at Hallis Hall in the near future. It wouldn't be surprising at all after he said this. But with that... 
Let's do a quick rundown of who Stein is. Let's be fair here. He was our chief contract negotiator over most of a 22-year stint with the Bears. Uh, he came to the Bears under Jerry Angelo. You remember him. It was in 02, and it was after team president Ted Phillips. He had been negotiating contracts himself. That in itself is unbelievable. It's such a Bears thing to do. So Stein, he did this for 13 years until Ryan Pace became general manager. Then Joey Lane took over the duty, but Stein, he remained on staff and started doing it again briefly when Ryan Poles, when he took over as GM. Prior to that, um, Matt Feinstein was taking on those chores. So, so there's been some shuffling here. On the hiring of Stein, though, let's look at that a little closer. Jerry Angelo, once again, he was hired as the Bears GM uh, back in 01. He put in a full season and saw that. Ted Phillips, he was doing a job that was way over his head. We needed an upgrade negotiating contracts and also someone who was an expert in the salary cap. So that's where Stein came in. He was an up-and-coming agent. He was fantastic, a Temple Law degree. Uh, contract negotiations were just his thing. It was a great move to bring him into the fold. It was a very good thing, and Stein was brilliant at the outset. His reputation was being firm but fair. Remember that, firm and fair. I'm going to touch on that. He did lots of homework. He'd examine how specific agents negotiated, what their tells, what their preferences were, what their patterns were, and went into negotiations with them, actually knowing them quite well ahead of time. It's really, it's really great to look into. He was a fantastic guy at his job. And for example, it's a super simple example. Before he got into negotiations with Drew Rosenhaus, he went, he, Drew Rosenhaus is huge. He read his book looking for tells. <laughs> simple, simple um, example, but that's that's just a small one. Uh, he was also an innovator. He pushed for the idea of a four-year rookie contract to standardize. This led to more franchise stability. There's so many things we can thank him for. That's what I'm saying. This isn't a slam piece at all. I'm gonna be fair. Uh, his law background, that was what was loved most by Phillips. And you guys know, and I'm going to bring this up, it's not a great thing to have everything run by lawyers on a football team and not with football guys. It's another conversation, but that has not been a great thing for us. And he ended up with a huge role in the Bears organization all this time. Then after him, we look at Emery taking over at GM. He kept Stein where he was at. Pace kept him on as well. But after the first year, he hired Joey Lane from New Orleans uh, in, uh, in 2015. You see, he brought in his own guy like many guys do. You can't blame him for that. But here's another thing. There were rumors that Stein, he simply wasn't going to be a good fit for Pace's football operations and that Stein was a bit antiquated in his techniques, a little behind the times. So Stein, he remained with the Bears as their general counsel. His relationships with Phillips and the McCaskey family, those have already, always been so strong. And they were committed to keeping him a part of the organization. I mean, he stayed in after that due to this and not necessarily job performance. Is that a good thing? Now we fast forward. In 2022, our GM Ryan Poles, he was brought in. And at first he played ball. At the suggestion of George McCaskey and Phillips, he actually reinstated Stein into his previous role that he had prior to Pace's arrival. It's, it's incredible. But a year later, the Bears started the process of replacing Ted Phillips. He announced his upcoming retirement. Let's not celebrate that too hard, but it's actually a good thing. I know um, I'm not going to get into the celebration part of that. Let's save it for the comments. Um, let's move forward. So Kevin Warren. He was hired in January of 23, just the beginning of this last year, and that was to replace Phillips, and it started officially in April. Kevin Warren then made this decision. He made this decision. This was a huge tell. This is a huge tell that Warren actually has control and that he can do what he feels fit. That's huge. People, this is a huge step as an organization for ownership to see control to Warren. This is a very good thing a very good thing that we're taking this step. Here's the main reason for his firing as well. Let's get to this. You notice I said fair and firm when describing him as a negotiator, right? This seemed to no longer be the case over the years. He started driving too hard of a bargain. 
relationships of agents and players, they're starting to go way downhill. For example, there was a particular issue with joke with um, Brisker's contract negotiation. It resulted in Brisker missing rookie rookie minicamp. Previously, this was reported by pro football Focus's Brad Spielberger. This is a real thing. It's confirmed. Another source, they discussed that Warren felt that Hallis Hall was a leaky ship and that too much information had been reaching the media before it should have been reported. Now, the source didn't directly link any information directly to Stein. He did say that Warren needed to clear out the old oak trees <laughs> to help tighten things up here at Hallis Hall. Whatever information that's leaked to the media, a different source also said that he'd be shocked if one of them was Stein. I mean, he's a lawyer, client client privilege information. That's that's like your thing if you're a lawyer, right? But it could be other high level executives within the organization. Um, look for more firings. This is the biggest issue too. Polls. He has a style that's built on smoke screens, right? We've been talking about it a lot. It's built on keeping tight-lipped as an organization. I mean, this is why no one knows what we're doing in the draft, what quarterback we're going to have moving forward, what offensive coordinator we're going toward. If the old guard isn't on board with that, it's a thought of the old phrase, loose lips sink ships, right? So expect more firings of some more upper-level upper, upper level personnel moving forward. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. Sorry, I have a cold. Poles, he's from Kansas City, right? He has zero patience for this. Windy City Gridiron brought this to light as well. This is so good. They want to avoid the same issues the Chiefs had back in 17. We fight the Chiefs fired general manager John Dorsey in June of that year because there was a long-standing rumor that Dorsey was leaking information to the media. He leaked information to the media of, of the Chiefs' intention to trade up for Patrick Mahomes. What did that lead to? That led to the Chiefs actually needing to give more draft capital to still make the move. That's an, that's an incredible handicap for that happening. That rumor was also confirmed on Parkins and Spiegel a couple years ago by CBS Sports Boomer Esiason. That's something that was really happening. Polls is super sensitive to that, and so is Warren. Not to mention we have a stadium deal potentially getting done. Warren's heading that up, and he doesn't need interference on that either. It was being handled by Phillips and Stein also. And, and you guys know by following the story, relationships of Arlington Heights, they weren't being handled very well. And frankly, it's just time for a change across the board where needed. It's time for full power to be ceded over to Kevin Warren and I believe it's happening, and that's what I'm going to celebrate, and it's a fantastic thing. You guys let me know what you think. Uh, like and subscribe. Leave comments as you always do. I will look forward to talking then, and uh, hey, bear down. It's still going to be a great offseason. See ya.